In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We will come to the reflection on the Word of God today on the Tuesday of the 30th week in ordinary time. Let us listen to the first reading, the Gospel, and the short reflection. The first reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25. Brethren, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been grounding with labor pains together until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope we are saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, the response is, What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Great deeds the Lord worked for us. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. Response, What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Response, the great deeds the Lord worked for us. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Response, what great deeds the Lord worked for us. They go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. Response, what great deeds the Lord worked for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth that you have revealed to little ones the mystery of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. We are reading from Luke chapter 13, verse 18 to 21. At that time, Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like, and what shall I compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his garden, and grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, once more I will come you to this short reflection on this Tuesday of the 30th week in ordinary time. We have just listened to the two readings speaking to us in a powerful and but clear way. And I would like to take a few moments to look at them, what they could mean to us, 
to our own lives as individuals. In the Gospel of today, which was from Luke chapter 13, verse 18 to 21, Jesus is using two short images to express or describe what the kingdom of God is like. And he uses the, the parable uh, on the living, but also on this small seed uh, that that was known at that time, the mustard seed. In fact, it says, what is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It's like a mustard seed that a man look, took and planted in their garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush. The birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. And also he refers then to the to living that also would make the bread uh, become big. Now these two short parables teach us a bit about the nature of the kingdom of God and uh, really encourages us to know that we who seek the kingdom of God must know that it has to grow. Grow slowly in our own lives but also in the world or in the church if as members of the church, we know that it has to grow. This small seed, the mustard seed, which looks most significant at the beginning, as he said, will grow and even the birds can take shelter in the branches of that tree. There's a tendency for many of us to think that we have to have the kingdom of God immediately uh, cover the whole world and immediately we must saints, be saints. Yet from this message we know that we have to be patient and grow slowly. There are some people who look at other, um, other preachers of the word of God who seem to have big projects, big crusades, I don't know what they call them, renewal days, conferences, seem to be, have big impact, people with big projects, and they think we must all follow that line Yet it seems what the Lord is inviting us for are small, small steps that we have to, to make based on charity. That our actions, small as they may appear, simple, uh, simple acts of charity could make this kingdom grow big, could bring, have a big influence on society and on the world and in the places where we live, starting from where we live, really. Those people we're able to experience this abundance of fruit from our own lives if we are consistent and going patiently and constantly on what we believe in. God calls us to do small acts of kindness, to share our faith in a very simple way, maybe even a hidden way. And he will use that to bring his kingdom to grow and become very big. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, what we are called to do is not to do great things, but to do simple things with great love. Only then can we have an impact on this world. Small steps, small things we do with great love, with dedication, will have a bigger impact on this world than anything else. So the acts of, of loving, simplicity and humility planted, as seeds of faith will bear much fruit than going for big things where we're not even convinced and where there's no love involved, then we will not have much fruit. Let's pray for that wisdom, that where I am in my humility, in my simplicity, that's why I should begin, by loving, by reaching out to the neighbor. I don't have to look at those who seem to be greater than me in their actions. You know, there's that tendency to look at the one who is in the leadership, for example, you don't have to be a Saba Christo. You don't have to be a catechist or a priest or, or, or a pope or a bishop. But where you are, wherever you are, in whatever state you are, make use of that by impacting only the few people around you, by doing what is right, and then the kingdom of God will be growing. The impact that you may not even notice yourself is happening just by living your faith and following that, uh, that path of love that Jesus showed us and that's humility. Just pray for this wisdom 
that will in the end bear much fruit and may the kingdom of God grow in us and around us. The Lord be with you. May the mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Have a nice day.